Okay, so now let's take a look at managing user mailboxes in uh, Microsoft 365. So I've logged into my Microsoft 365 account. I'm going to come here to my show all, and I want my Exchange Admin Center. This is where we're going to manage everything related to mail flow in Microsoft 365. And as it loads, we're going to see, I'm going to collapse this because I want you to, and go home because I want you to see this from the beginning. So this gives us a quick overview of our mail flow. Uh, you can see forwarded messages, inbound messages, some training information here, some links to manage mailboxes. But if we really want to start playing with it, we're going to go to our recipients and we're going to go to mailboxes. And this is going to show us all of our mailboxes. And up here across the top, you'll see where we can add a shared mailbox, work on mail flow settings, export mailboxes. And then we can click on individual mailboxes and do things with them. So I click on Bilbo Baggins and it pops up here. And let's take a look at some of the options. So across the top, are going to be some shortcuts to things that we can manage elsewhere. So hide mailbox, mail forwarding. If mail comes to this box, we automatically forward it somewhere. And then grant send on behalf of permissions. Here we have our five tabs, general organization, delegation, mailbox, and others. And then underneath here is we're going to have our actual settings and information. So on our general tab, we can manage contact information here. First name, display name, last name, alias, so on and so forth. Hide from the global address list. Now, the global address list is going to be a list of all recipients inside the Exchange organization. So if I hide this, then nobody can see it. They can still contact Bilbo by emailing him directly, but he's not going to show up in any list of recipients. So the idea behind that is if we have mailboxes that we don't want everybody to see that they're there. We might want people to still be able to communicate with them. Maybe not everybody, but some people. But if I want to hide it so not everybody finds it, this is where I do my hide from uh, the global address list. If I have multiple email addresses, I can manage that here. So I've got an SIP and an SMTP email address. I can add additional email address types here. So I can add an SMTP address and then set that as my primary address rather than his uh, default account. If I've, got, if I've got multiple domains, I can add in different domains here or I can just add in different addresses in the same domain. So the idea here is to allow me to give multiple email addresses to a single user. Well, farther back than I wanted to. So that's my manage email, right? Or manage email addresses. Here's my mailbox usage. He's using 0.73 megabytes out of 49.5 gigabytes. So nothing that I'm worried about there. And then email apps. Which email apps am I going to allow this user to use? Uh, Outlook. Outlook desktop using Mappy, the Exchange web interface, the mobile using Exchange ActiveSync, IMAP, POP3, or Outlook on the web. And then I can disable specific applications if I only want them to be able to use certain ones. And then I can manage mobile devices. And in order for this to show anything, by the way, I would have had to have had them connect using a mobile device. Okay, if we go over to the next one, organization, this is pretty straightforward, title, department, manager, direct reports. We'll use that for a couple of different things. We will use it for um, searching users. We will also use it for a dynamic group membership. So I can create a dynamic group for everybody who's in a specific department or something like that. So if I wanted to manage organization information, I'd do it here add title, department, company, and manager, and then anybody that directly reports to them, or in this case, to Bilbo. Delegation, now, this has to do with giving other people permission to do things in this mailbox. So send as. I can grant send as permission. I'd click edit here, and then I'd add a member who has send as permission. So if I added Frodo, then Frodo has the ability, let me go ahead and confirm this for the moment, it sets the permission. Now Frodo 
has the ability to send as Bilbo. So Frodo can put in an email address or can send an email as Bilbo and it will look like it came directly from Bilbo. I'm going to go ahead and delete that permission now. So that's send as. I'm not sure if I actually saved that. I Let me delete and confirm. There we go. Now that's taken out. I can do a send on behalf of. Now the difference between send as and send on behalf of. If I give send as permission, Frodo can do an email as Bilbo Baggins and it will look like, like to the recipient like it came from Bilbo Baggins. Send on behalf of is a little bit different. It will say the recipient will get a message that says sent by Frodo Baggins on behalf of Bilbo Baggins. So notice this little indicator here, the from line in any message sent by the delegate indicates that the message was sent by the delegate on behalf of the mailbox owner. And then full access, read and manage, allows Frodo basically to look at everything Bilbo has. So both of these are sending permissions. This would allow Frodo to read Bilbo's inbox, contact list, deleted items, task list, anything that he has in his mailbox. It's full access. So I'm going to add right here, and I'm going to go ahead and add, same thing we did before, add Frodo Baggins, confirm, and Frodo can now open up Bilbo's mailbox. Now, notice changes were saved and will appear within five minutes. Several of the things we're going to do here once we make that change, it's actually going to take a little while for it to show up. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Delete and confirm. So if you're doing something, and some things we're going to look at in the next few videos might take up to 60 minutes to uh, finish propagating. So just be aware that when you make a change like this, it might not come through immediately. All right, so we looked at general organization, delegation. Here's their mailbox and their mail flow settings. So message size restrictions, maximum inbound and outbound, message delivery restrictions. Do we want to accept messages from everybody or only selected people? Do we want to block messages from selected senders? So this will allow us to control who's allowed to send and receive uh, to this um, or who's allowed to send, let me get this right, who's allowed to send to this mailbox. There we go. And then we have a retention policy, a default sharing policy. Some of these we'll look at a little bit later when we start dealing with policies. And then forwarding email. Do I want to automatically forward this email somewhere else? That's going to be managed here. And then here we can set custom attributes, which again can be used for searching for uh, specific email boxes or can be used for dynamic group membership or something like that. If we think Bilbo is about to depart for the West, so we're going to remove his account, but we don't want to remove his mailbox, we can convert it to a shared mailbox right here. So that's one of two uses for shared mailboxes. I can convert it to a shared mailbox. I can give someone access to that shared mailbox. Then I can delete his account because he won't be using it anymore. And, but I still have access to that email. That happens a lot, by the way, when we let somebody go from an organization or they choose to move on to another job opportunity. We don't want to lose their email, but we don't want to maintain their access to the their account. So we can disable their account but by converting their mailbox to a shared mailbox, and I can give someone else access to it. We can set a mail tip. The mail tip is going to display when people send an email to this mail contact. So it'll automatically display for them. We can set their group membership. We can recover deleted items. And then we can set uh, litigation holds. That's something we're going to look at a little bit later on. And then finally, we can set a recipient limit. How many people is this uh, individual or this mailbox allowed to send to at one time? The default recipient limit is 500. So I can change that here. Anywhere from 1 to 1,000. Okay. Now, remember across the top, we have three shortcuts. So hide a mailbox, forward email, 
uh, and send on behalf of. And so we've seen where those are located at as we've gone through the rest of our settings. So those are the basic settings we're going to deal with from uh, or while we're managing mailboxes. Now, we also have a couple of other things here. I can select multiple users, and when I select multiple users, there's Samwise, my options up here change. So I can bulk edit. So I can bulk edit mail flow settings. I can hide a bunch of people simultaneously from the addre address list. I can set mailbox delegation or policies and in my edits I can add contact information and app settings to bulk users. You'll notice when I get down to just one that actually changes because I can do more things with just one user although from here not a whole lot more um, but I can do different things with just one user than I can with a uh, bulk setting. Okay um, there we go that is the basics of managing mailboxes and our mailbox management tool in our Exchange Admin Center.